Hi, on my last video I mentioned about age and I mentioned about carrying weight and I have been carrying a bit too much um, and I'm sorry about the quality of this video but I'm hand holding the GoPro to do it. Um, this is the bag I've used for a number of years now. It's a Wander bag, I can't remember its name, Fenwick, it's a Fenwick bag and it's pretty damn big it's got a metal frame inside it this front and zip pocket in here takes the kangaroo bag in there which it leaks it dribbles out not inside the bag so it's a phenomenal bag it is quite wide a nice big pocket inside tripod went in there and the frame sits around here inside the bag and inside there there's lots of space for my camera gear and up to the top as well so definitely be the drones in this side, the drone, sorry, uh, main camera with it lens attached, this is where I set it up. A lens, a couple of len bigger lens there, GoPro stuff, um, odds and ends there, can of juice there, etc. And there's lots of room at the top. However, as you can see, the size difference in volume is quite significant. Uh, this is the, the version three it's the Wandered 21 litre Provoke bag and it's just brilliant. I had one a few years back of the first version brought out. I sold it in order to buy this bag. But um, no, this is just perfect. So in here, I've got a few pockets here. In here I've got the uh, landing platform for the drone. So in here I've got Mini 3 Pro, which I might make a Mini 4 when it comes out, whenever it comes out, providing it's worth the change. It's a sensor one for photography that would make for the four, providing it's 250 grams or less for me. The controller, the RC controller's there. I've got my, I've sold all my Nikon stuff off because it, Nikon camera and the Fujifilm X-T5 body-wise are similar weights. The 55 to 200 lens, which is attached there, it's a similar weight to the Nikon, but now I can carry a 16mm lens from Fujifilm, which is phenomenal. And I've got the 18 to 55 lens in there as well. And it all fits in the pack. Initially, this little pod was quite tight when I put it in, difficult to get the camera out. But a bit of stretching, I've not really gone anywhere to take major photographs. I was at the Black Isle farm thing yesterday and squeezed in and out of the bag a few times it is slacking off i just wish they made this pod properly fitting this the area which would be perfect um the top bit here is great because i carry odd medications the l bracket doesn't allow to fit on the camera to fit the bag i've got a packet full of sd cards there which is waterproof in there i keep my gopro um and odds and ends at the side there's a pouch here which allows you to get sideways to get the camera out. It's a piece of blooming nonsense because you can't get the camera out. <clears throat> Side pocket here which allows you to put your keys. as a key fob in there that takes it. This is just a waste of space. This side is where you could attach. Well, I will put my tripod there, hold it in place. And there's a roll top at the top which extends to another five litres, I believe. So your coat and jumpers and things and sandwiches can go in there. It is an awful lot lighter this zip here allows you to open a dedicated pocket which is this soft lined it's put your specs and stuff like that things you want to get in a hurry um the lid as i say allows you to put your drone landing uh compact compactable disc in there i've got a spare battery there i've got what have i got in there oh yeah did i mention i like camera waivers so I've got two camera waivers there um, and that's a spare pocket for something. Not big pockets but they're handy. So you could get a, I think it's a 15 inch MacBook Pro or something, get a tablet in there but I don't do that but you could. Um, so all in all it's really good, it comes with everything, this bag. Um, I can get a different cube that goes all the way inside but I don't want that. I just want this cube to carry the gear I've got. So on my next walk, 
which I'll put this video on with, will carry this gear, and plus what's in the top. So it's a comfortable bag, it's not heavy to carry. Uh, I'll add this to the video. This is the Corrie Shalik Park spot uh, beside the phone box. And it's up this track as I did before. There's a few midges, but not a problem. It's just going to 7 o'clock in the morning, it's Wednesday. I think it's the 8th or the 9th of October 2023. Anyway, let's keep going. This nearly caught me out this morning. We turn left here. This I think was the original track through the wood but there's now a deer fence or whatever up there to stop you passing. So it is a left turn here which looks odd. I can't. Yep, this is the gate we go through. Well, past, not through. The Monroe's covered in cloud at the top there, which I can't see, I don't know if you can see me on that. Um, but up here along the ridge to the Monroe, down again, and there's another one you do at the far side and then you come down the track. Sounds easy, <laughs> not for me. Just taking a few photographs there. Um, this is the cairn where, excuse my meeting, where you go straight ahead to go up the up track. In my case, I'm taking the right fork. Still leasing. This is a view, literally taking the right fork.
first time drinking water out the stream using my special filter bottle. Not bad. What a waste. Well, this walk, I reckon, is the best walk I've done from the photographic point of view. Because the views and things you see, you can spend all day and get nowhere because you're taking photographs. Um, I've taken a few with the camera, with the iPhone, with the drone, see what it's like. Um, this is stunning. This is a small Wathy, which I'm sitting in now, obviously, I uh, stopped for a coffee and a sandwich. Um, it's really good. There's a couple I met here who've lived up here for 30 years and they, they've done this walk 300 or, those 300 or whatever times, that they, they know it well. So from here on in, there's a hydro to help put in, so there's a track, proper track, road track from here on in down to the log side at the bottom, down the roadside at the station. This otherwise is a kind of stony gravel track. I thought leaving the glen where the mountains were coming down, I thought it was going to be a boring, flat, uninteresting walk. But once you come down so many hundred yards, you're above the river that runs down. The old Scottish pine forest is there. Dead trees, live trees, twisted trees. Absolutely stunning. I've taken the photograph of the Japanese tree with the mountains in sight as a panoramic. So hopefully that turns out. I'm going to come back to this a few times because there's lots of photographs I can stop and take. Um, really is. I'll take the drone out and do the bridge with the waterfall there from a different angle just now. And I'll add that to the video. Anyway, I'll finish my coffee. And Looking back to where the bothy was just around the corner there, these two trees just frame the mountains. I'm going to take a bit of drone footage here, drone photographs and camera photographs and see what they turn out like. What a fantastic day. It's kind of down there where that track comes down. It's down about the bottom there, just around the corner. Uh, so I've come from way over the other side, down the glen to there. Walked on the path to the bridge at the bottom. 
and uh, there's no other road but this road coming back there's not a lot to see on the track but the vistas are stunning I've taken a hopefully a panoramic of all that over there it looks quite good, I like the design, the patterns on the mountains I also like the design and the pattern on the hillside where the trees were cut down so all being well, it should be okay but no my luck, I'm not be I'm a pessimist <laughs> um, so it's a bit of a slog on this track so far but there are so many photographic opportunities here I defy anybody who could come on this walk and not take one photograph it is stunning, you could spend a week here on the trail doing photographs, camping every 10 yards I'm serious I'm coming back uh, when there's a change in weather maybe towards winter if it's possible because it's a long way from where I live from my machine down here it's uh, down to where the car park is it's uh, not good in the winter I'll see anyway, no promises, let's keep going you probably can't hear this over the wind but that's quite a slog from down there up to here it's not steep steep but it's constant my wee legs <laughs> I think it's downhill all the way now got some uh, Pepsi Max in the car, looking forward to that big drink this walk, despite being long, I don't know how long it is, I forgot to set the um, route thing to show the route and the altitude and stuff like that but I'll get the details off my Garmin GPS unit um, I'm sure it says nine and a half miles on uh, Walk Highlands but I think it's more than that <laughs> it feels it anyway behind me there I've just come through a gate it's at the top of the very long walk up from the last bridge it's quite a visually uninspiring walk up that hill um, but just before I reached the bridge there were three I will say young cyclists because I'm being kind um, middle aged full of fun I met them at the Bothy down the far end and they had cycled already to the Bothy I think and had cycled back up towards the way I'd come down which is something and then they're cycling back up here again they said they're going over to Kinlock U from here but I'm not quite sure how that works um, anyway very fit guys really good to talk to them so I did suggest to look at my channel so we'll see what happens people often say that and don't it's not a problem Good metal bridge and a stunning, stunning vista. Almost back to the station. I think this is the last bridge, which I wasn't expecting. So we're still coming down the track towards the station. But there's a lots of lovely trees, but this one is just amazing. Very old. Very old tree. Anyway. And that's the end of my day, just about back down the track, up the train station's behind me the car park's just down there to the right went for a can of juice I'm not exhausted my legs are a bit iffy because I've been walking up and down hills 
despite being a low level walk. Um, but nope, I thought I enjoyed it. Fantastic. Yeah.